Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii, brought to you from beautiful downtown Honolulu. Welcome, one and all. We've got a cool show for you today. Cool as in cool roofs and cool walls. The Here in Hawaii, we're interested in terms of comfort in the interior only in keeping the heat out. If it gets too cold on a winter morning, we put on fuzzy slippers, we walk on rugs, we put an extra blanket on the bed. So it's strictly heat mitigation that we are interested in. And when you think about all the ways to keep the heat out of a home or a building, when you really think about it, probably the most cost effective and resource efficient method of doing that is by having cool walls. Those are walls that accept the radiant heat, the sun's energy, and bounce it back to the atmosphere. And there's something called high emittance, where the heat that does get into that coating emits, also emits back to the atmosphere. And we apply that both to walls and roofs. So who better to talk about this then, the Government Affairs Coordinator and Manager Extraordinaire of the Cool Roof Rating Council and the Cool Wall Rating Council. Oh, and before I turn it over to Audrey Bagaro, let me say that this morning in the Energy Office, we had a talk with SIA, the Southeast Efficiency Alliance, and Hawaii is now an integral part of that, even though we're way off to the West. And I introduced the fact that we have in common with those hot, humid states there, the fact that cool walls, cool roofs are integral to keeping the heat out naturally. And they welcome the idea very much. So, Audrey, we have yet another uh, ally on the team. So, on <clears throat> that very cheery note, let's turn it over. To Miss Cool Roof, Cool Wall herself, Audrey McGarrow. Take it away, Audrey. Thanks, Howard. Well, that's that's wonderful news. Um, yeah, just to introduce myself, um, I'm the project manager of the Cool Roof Rating Council. Um, we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization based in the United States. Um, our primary role is providing third-party product ratings for roofing exterior wall products. Um, related to their radiated properties, which Howard described as their solar reflectance and thermal emittance, which helps keep buildings out, um, sorry, keeps heat out of buildings. Um, so if you want to go ahead and pull up um, the first slide, well, second slide, actually. Um, I, before we begin, just wanted to outline a little bit, you know, Howard mentioned that obviously heat is the primary concern in Hawaii. Um, you don't have to deal too much with cold weather. Um, but just to kind of put this, this topic of heat into perspective, heat is the leading weather-related um, cause of human mortality across the United States. And um, it is responsible for more deaths than things like hurricanes, tornadoes, blizzards, et cetera. And um, heat can be really dangerous because it can also exacerbate existing health conditions. So a lot of times it's actually tricky for um, to really understand the full impact that heat is having on people's health and on mortality um, because it can be conflated with other things, especially during extreme heat events. Um, also, of course, people living without air conditioning can be more susceptible to the dangers of extreme heat. Heat is exacerbated by what's called the urban heat island or UHI effect. This is something that occurs when urban areas like Honolulu are um, hotter than their surrounding suburban or rural areas. Um, to provide a couple examples, more than eight out of 10 Americans live in urban areas, and 41 million of those Americans live in areas that are at least eight degrees Fahrenheit higher than their surroundings. If you think about eight degrees Fahrenheit, that is a huge difference when it comes to comfort and safety and um, the many negative impacts of heat. Next slide. All right, Audrey, let me interject and say that I am blessed to live in Manoa Valley, very green, lush area. And 
when I go down just three miles to the flatlands where the urban area is, mm -hmm. the temperature increases in just three miles. Mm -hmm. The flatlands, it's say uh, 84 degrees in Manoa, 76 degrees. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very dramatic. We have microclimates uh, here, here in Hawaii because of our mountains. For sure. Um, so that's a that's a great segue into um, I wanted to talk a little bit about what is causing this difference in heat. Right. So, um, you know, Howard, you mentioned the mountains and the the sort of bigger geographic things that that can affect it. And on a more uh, micro scale, we also have a lot of reasons why a city can be hotter than its surroundings. Number one, a high concentration of dark and impervious surfaces. So things like roofs, walls, uh, roads, parking lots, pretty much any of your conventional building materials um, tend to be dark. They tend to um, be impervious to water and they absorb and retain a lot of heat that ends up getting trapped in urban environments. Of course, there's also a relative lack of trees and green space. Trees and plants naturally cool the air when they're um, around in greater quantities, but um, we experience a lack of that natural cooling when there are less trees and plants um, built into the urban landscape. Also, something called urban canyons, which are tall buildings that flank sidewalks and streets. These trap air um, and slow air movement, which makes it um, tends to keep it both hotter and um, lower air quality because pollutants that are getting trapped there um, aren't making their way out of the city as easily. Finally, things like other sources of heat besides the sun, think air conditioners, um, exhaust from vehicles, is just pumping more heat in that's getting trapped and getting um, uh, making cities hotter than their surroundings. Um, this, this urban heat has many negative impacts. I already talked about heat illness and death, but there's also a lot of other impacts that people might not always think about. It's been found that higher temperatures actually contribute to reduced productivity at school and at work. And they've also been linked to greater work-related accidents, um, possibly because people are less focused, um, or, or more heat stress on the job. Um, things like damage to key infrastructure, like power grids and water supplies, as well as lower air quality, like I mentioned earlier, um, which is due to a couple factors. One, because hotter air actually moves slower. Um, and then also because warmer environments are a breeding ground for ground level ozone, which is a pollutant that can be harmful to your respiratory system and is also an ingredient in smog. Um, Lastly, I do want to point out that these impacts of urban heat disproportionately affect certain groups and certain areas of cities. Um, links have been found between higher temp urban temperatures and um, areas where lower income people live and where people of color live. So um, this is also um, and, and a bit of an environmental justice issue as well. So um, if we move along to the next couple of slides, I'm going to introduce again this topic of cool roofs and walls. Howard, I don't know if you have anything uh, to add before we move on. Uh, nope, nope. I'll, I'll uh, fill in as, as you go. Okay. Uh, cool roofs and cool walls are ones that highly reflect solar energy and efficiently emit heat that is absorbed. So um, those two properties, the first one is called solar reflectance, which is the proportion of solar energy that is reflected by the surface. This property is measured on a scale from zero to one, with one being 100% reflective. So that would mean the surface is reflecting 100% of solar energy that's hitting it. Likewise, thermal emittance is also measured on a scale of zero to one, with one being the most thermally emissive. and um, Basically, uh, when you have higher values of SR and TE, what you're going to see is the surface staying cooler and transferring less solar energy as heat into the building, which keeps indoor temperatures cooler as well. On screen here is an example of that phenomenon. Um, here we're looking at a dark wall and a light wall. Um, it's not really necessarily a black and white issue. We're going to talk about that more later about 
um, other color technologies that are out there. But for the purpose of, of providing an example, um, you can see that the dark blackish wall in the sun is nearly 50 degrees Fahrenheit hotter than the lighter white colored wall. Uh, both of those photos were taken at the same time under the same conditions. So um, just a, a quick illustration of that difference in surface temperature just based on color alone. So moving this along into discussions of saving on cooling, saving energy when, when you're talking about air conditioning. Cool exterior walls in particular um, are the focus of this presentation. I do want to mention that pretty much everything I'm saying about walls can also be applied to, applied to roofs and in a slightly greater magnitude. Roofs do have uh, more of an impact on a building's solar heat gain than walls do um, due to the uh, orientation, the way that roofs are um, interacting with solar radiation as opposed to walls. But for walls in particular, um, studies have shown that in U.S. climate zones one through four, of which um, Hawaii is located in, in climate zone one, cool walls can provide HVAC energy savings um, annually. So what we see in some northern climates of the, of the United States is that um, there's something called the winter heating penalty, where just as a cool surface will, will help you lower your energy bills in the summer, you could see an increase in heating costs um, in the winter in northern climates. For Hawaii, obviously, that is not uh, of high concern. Um, so you're really just going to see uh, savings on energy and and more comfortable temperatures um, throughout the year. Uh, Audrey, let me uh, interrupt with a very, very interesting story. I was at a uh, Energy Codes conference in St. Paul, Minnesota, some years ago, and we were touring a uh, nursing facility, brand new, built to the highest, highest efficiency standards. And we got up to the roof and the roof was black. I said, what the heck is uh, go going on here? Oh, no, 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 take that back. The roof was white. And I said, what the heck is going on here? And the building manager said, what do you mean? And I said, this is St. Paul, Minnesota. You have severe winters. Don't you want to coat the roof black so that you can absorb the winter sun, melt the snow easier, and save a lot on your heating energy. And he said, no, we are so efficient in this building that heating is a very, very low cost component. And also, we found that even here, the air conditioning cost is greater than the heating costs. And therefore, we're keeping this surface white so we can uh, reflect the heat back up. St. Paul, Minnesota. <laughs> so that's really an interesting. interesting little little tidbit to, tidbit there. Yeah, and I imagine um, if snow is covering the roof most of the winter anyway, you you mm -hmm. wouldn't really be be getting a lot of benefit from that black roof anyway. I wanted to talk a little bit more. I had mentioned earlier that cool roofs and walls aren't a black and white issue. Um, so I, I wanted to kind of expand on that a little bit. So first of all, um, you might, you know, when you picture a cool roof, the first thing that comes to mind might be a bright white flat roof. That is certainly a very common and a very effective um, way to achieve a high solar reflectance, right? So white, off-white, pastel colors um, are all going to naturally be reflecting a lot of solar radiation, which is fantastic. That being said, a lot of times um, people are looking for darker or different colors that conventionally um, might not have a very high solar reflectance. And that is where products that are specifically formulated to reflect infrared radiation come into play. Um, these go by a few different names. The example on screen, they're referred to as spectrally selective. They're also called infrared um, reflecting or IR pigments. But the, the technology is, it's, it's all the same idea, which is that we have um, pigments that are specially formulated to reflect invisible infrared light. So they're staying cooler in the sun, but they are still reflecting visible light in whatever 
amount is, is desired for the particular color that you're trying to achieve. So um, these products are available on the market for various types of both roofing and wall materials. We see them for, for decades, they've been used in the coated metal industry. So a metal roof, metal wall panels, things of that nature are available using these spectrally selective pigments. Um, looking at residential roofs, there are asphalt shingles that have solar reflective granules, um, same, same idea. Um, also paints and coatings that are formulated with, with similar technologies. So um, that's really a, a great way, um, and we want to make sure people are educated about that fact, is that when we're talking about cool roofs and walls, we're talking about all of it, right? We're talking about um, anything that is going to be increasing that solar reflectance um, in, in order to, to stay cool. So I wanted to um, transition into talking a little bit about incentives and codes and programs and, and how all of that relates to this idea of cool exterior walls. Again, cool roofs have been um, pretty prolific in, in certain climates for a while now. So they are much more established in codes, programs, and standards. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about cool walls and, and how those fit in. Um, the state of Hawaii is actually the first and only United uh, state of the United States to include cool exterior walls in their building energy code. Um, so as, as you know, the Hawaii building energy code is based on the 2018 IECC with state adopted amendments. And part of these amendments are an insulation trade-off and compliance credit for the installation of exterior walls with a visible light reflectance of 0.64 or higher. Um, and that is for newly constructed tropical homes. Um, I believe that, that this requirement is in the process of being updated. Howard, I don't know if you wanna elaborate. When we first adopted the IECC codes, <clears throat> the mainland requirement was <clears throat> for when you re-roofed a flat roof, and it was uninsulated, you had to put insulation either on top of the roof deck or below the roof deck. And the Roofing Association of Hawaii came and visited me personally and said, Howard, this is going to double the cost of re-roofing. If you try to amend like this, we're going to go to the legislature and we're going to fight this tooth and nail. Oh, okay. So we amended that by saying, you shall have an energy star level of reflectance on this new roof in lieu of the insulation. And that worked for a while, but then came good old California Title 24, and they have a higher level of initial reflectance. There's initial reflectance, three-year reflectance, and emittance. All of that was higher, and the roofing council agreed that we would update the, those levels so that the reflectance is even uh, greater for re-roofing uh, flat roofs. So that was another improvement we made. And of course, that reduces the uh, heat transmittance even more. Um, I want to also call out that there are several model codes and standards that have cool exterior walls written into them. Um, those examples are on the slide here, but I want to specifically mention ASHRAE Standard 90.1. Um, ASHRAE Standard 90.1 has a cool wall requirement for climate zone zero. So that doesn't actually apply anywhere in the United States, including Hawaii. But they also, um, the standard also includes a small compliance credit for climate zones one and above. So, of course, that includes um, climates throughout the U.S., um, and for that uh, compliance credit, newly constructed buildings that use exterior wall materials with a solar reflectance greater than 0.25 can earn the compliance credit. Mm -hmm. And moving on to green building certifications, um, the LEED rating system also offers credit for cool exterior walls. This is a pilot credit that came out a few years ago. And in order to earn the credit, uh, you have to surface your building um, at least 60% of the building's gross exterior wall area with a material that has an unweathered solar reflectance of at least 0.6 and an initial thermal emittance of at least 0.75. 
Um, furthermore, the ANSI GBI-01 standard, which is the basis for the Green Globes certification program, also contains a cool, wall, um, a cool exterior wall requirement for climate zones other than six and eight. So um, moving on, talking about compliance um, here in Hawaii and earning these um, voluntary green building certifications that I just mentioned, um, more and more people are turning to um, third-party verified data. So data that is provided by an entity other than just a manufacturer of a product. So that's really where the CRRC comes in. We are um, a third-party entity. We work with independent um, laboratories, accredited independent laboratories, to perform testing for products that obtain a CRRC rating. These products are also weathered, um, exposed to the natural environment for three years at approved test farms that are also um, vetted and approved by the CRRC. And all of this data is available for free um, publicly on our directory at coolroofs.org slash directory. We maintain separate directories for both roofing products and exterior wall products. Um, so I would encourage if anyone is interested in the idea of cool roofs and walls or, um, you know, we're working on a project that's using them, the CRC directories are a fantastic resource for, for finding that third-party data. Uh, moving on to slide 14, we also have several other resources available on our website. Um, specifically, I want to call out our codes, programs, and standards database. Um, the screenshots on screen are actually a little bit out of date because we just recently totally revamped that web page. There's a lot more detail now on that site about the actual like summary of the requirements of these different codes and standards per jurisdiction. So you can get on there and see, you know, what are the rules for cool roofs in Honolulu and that information, easy access on our website. And then we also have links to the actual code language, which it is very important to, to always check because, you know, codes get updated. Um, but, but that's a really great repository if you're interested in learning more about requirements in your specific area. Finally, um, on the last slide here, we also have a lot of educational resources on our website. Um, this spans from one to two to three page PDFs all about different topics. If you're interested in learning more about the urban heat island effect or about heat equity, we have a new document that came out last summer specific to using cool roofs and walls um, kind of through that heat equity lens. Uh, lots of documents that go into more detail about the technical nature of our programs and and all that good stuff. So um, that's about all I had prepared. Howard, um, do you have any questions or, or want me to go into any more detail? I'll uh, give you a quiz. IECC energy codes, uh, flat commercial roofs. Do, does the IECC have anything to say about reflectance? That's a quiz for you. <laughs> I actually don't know. Um, uh, yeah. I am not the uh, the codes expert on our team, <laughs> but I, well, I'd like for you to fill us in. <laughs> yeah, th this is something I, I used to sit on, on the, the national committees and something I and some other people fought hard for and won. Uh, flat commercial roofs, new construction must conform to the Energy Star levels of reflectance and that starts at uh, 0.65 reflectance for climate zones one, two, three. Uh, we're in climate zone one in Hawaii. Two is the southern, southernmost states. And then climate zone three gets up into about the, the middle of, of the Dixie states across Texas and so forth. So we have cool rules embedded. And IECC is the most used uh, national standard. And I will say that the most, oh, I've done a lot of uh, temperature measurement uh, myself, uh, shooting a dark wall, it's getting direct solar radiation over here, and then there's a white surface right over here. And I <clears throat> traditionally have gotten on a hot afternoon, a uh, temperature difference of uh, easy 50 degrees. And I saw an ad in the paper some years ago, there was a, picture of a fellow up on a roof 
rolling down very, very high reflectance coating. And this was on a school roof. It had very rough asphalt, and he was just going over that rough, dark asphalt. And the temperature before with the dark surface was 178. The temperature after 104, a drop of 74 degrees. Hmm. And these schools are not, for the most part, air conditioned. And what a temperature difference for interior that that would make. And a little side note. Uh, we had a heat wave some years ago, and kids in schools, unconditioned schools, were literally sweating onto their paper. Very, very poor working environment, actually, could be a, a health hazard. Mm. And everybody was saying, AC, AC, AC. And people like me pointed out, put AC <clears throat> into a hot environment like that. It's like putting an ice cube into an oven. Mm. So we've been pretty successful in requiring reflective roofs on school roofs when when the uh, when a, a new job on the roof is uh, needed and oh when you reduce uh, the ac use as you would because your interior temperature is naturally much cooler when you reduce the ac and you're getting that ac the electricity from either coal gas or oil in our case when you reduce that level of fuel use you're reducing the amount of co2 put into the atmosphere and co2 carbon dioxide is the main particulate matter that's holding the heat in and is responsible for our climate change so any final quick party notes on that cherry note audrey <laughs> Well, I, I think you make an excellent point, and that's the beauty of of cool surfaces is, um, you know, they have impacts at the very local level and all the way up to to what helping to reduce uh, carbon emissions. So, yeah, thank you so much for having me. It yeah. was it was great to be able to talk. Thank you so much, Audrey, and we'll be seeing you uh, before too awfully long. So, Absolutely. on that very cheery note, we bid fond adieu. Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii. See you next time. this show, why don't you give us a like or subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much.